You see them every day, and chances are they see you too. These are the portraits by the artist Joseph Wallace King. Most of his collection is stored in Elon's archives, but some hang in Lidner Hall, Belk Library, and McCrary Theater. We had friends who were heavily involved with Elon, the Corey family, the Powells, Ed and Betty Powell, and the Keenans. He did feel that Elon was a very progressive school that was important to him. And I think in being a progressive school, he felt that they could handle the burden of a collection of art. Deborah King was married to Joe for 13 years. Deborah, now remarried, lives in Venice, Italy, but is back at Elon sorting through Joe's collection. And this one is Joe in the studio, and this is him with our little dog. Her late husband preserved the lives of those he painted on canvas. Now, Deborah is preserving Joe's memory in an informational website. She hopes to launch it this spring in honor of Joe's 100th birthday. How did you and Joe meet? He was a friend of my grandfather's. <laughs> this is a wedding portrait of Deborah, but this was not the first time Joe painted her. She started modeling for him when she was 13. A decade later, Deborah fell in love with Joe, who was 70 at the time. A marriage between two generations. When did you realize you were in love with him? Oh, Lord. I think from the moment I saw him. Really, from the moment I saw him when I was a kid, I realized that I was that I, he was special to me, let me put it that way. I, I realized that he was very special in my, or, or was going to be special. You know, I was just so young, I don't, don't remember when the, there was an actual moment when I knew it, except that feeling was so strong. Joe King was born in Horse Pasture, Virginia in 1911. One of 12 children, the King clan moved to Greensboro when Joe was six years old. Since then, Joe called North Carolina home. He and Deborah lived in a remodeled blacksmith shop in Winston-Salem where Joe kept his art studio. He wasn't working in a nine to five job. It's not a, it's not a life that anyone else has. His life, his, his work was also his passion. So he was working all day, every day, and loving it. He loved what he did. Painting was the most important thing in his life. Joe dreamed of joining the circus, but fate had different plans for him. When he was 11 years old, Joe fell from a seesaw and broke his left arm. That wound became severely infected and required amputation. Did Joe ever experience any challenges only having one arm? There was no rehabilitation in those days, but he didn't want anyone to favor him, treat him differently, and he didn't want it to be noticed. So and many people did know him for years and were not aware of the fact that he had one arm. And he, he didn't want that to be a, an issue. Instead of gaining fame on the high wire and trapeze, he earned an international reputation painting the likes of Queen Elizabeth II, Richard Nixon, four kings of Saudi Arabia, and then United Nations President Madame Pandit. Joe was almost always being commissioned to paint portraits, but he was looking for something more. He was looking for a style of painting that was unique to him. And that's a very difficult thing for a painter to do. It's easy to do portraits and just continue making a living as a portrait painter. Not easy, but easier than trying to find your own way in a style of painting that um, is unique to you. But he spent some time there in Florence painted feverishly, I understand, for people who were around, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> but um, he developed this Vinciata style of painting. His life, his interest in Italy was all of Italy. He adored Italy. Like the Renaissance artist, Joe used a palette that did not have the colors red or black, achieving skin tones with the color burnt sienna. He developed the Vinciata style of painting after visiting the castle Vinciliata in Florence. It was there he felt so moved to begin painting in this new classical style. His special connection to the place led him to sign his paintings as Vinciata. It was more a feeling, it was a sentiment that he had. You know, his dark foreboding clouds, as someone said once to him, he said, they're not foreboding, they're romantics. <laughs> Joe saw Italy as a land of the Renaissance without the automobiles and electric lights. His Vinciata paintings have an ageless spiritual quality. They depict Italian castles, ancient towns, and Mediterranean figures set against a dramatic landscape. Now this is the same girl in a portrait. Okay. in a Joe King portrait mm -hmm. and not a Vinciata painting, so you can see quite a bit of difference. 
Joe differentiated between these two styles by signing his commission portraits as Joseph Wallace King and his neoclassical paintings as Vinciata. So he was fascinated by Italian culture mm -hmm. and he lived there, mm -hmm. but he didn't learn the language? Never. He didn't want to know that Italians were like everybody else that they had the same problems, the same complaints, um, they, were, they had the same worries about paying the bills. He wanted to see them in a fantasy. In his mind, the fantasy that he had created, this fabulous renaissance and the people, that they were still that. And he didn't want to believe they had all the modern problems and, and complications that they have, of course. I told him he was just lazy just didn't want to learn. <laughs> Deborah was Joe's biggest critic, the sort of relationship that can only be cultivated over a lifetime. You're going back and you're kind of pouring over those, those memories. What does that feel like? Is that, is that difficult to do? Well, not really. The paintings are, have all, I've always been able to separate the man from the work and the paintings are never a problem. There is some nostalgia and, and it's sometimes very happy, sometimes very sad to see photographs of him in particular situations, maybe places we were together or a particular uh, moment that I remember surrounded by a, a, a photograph of him. That, that is sometimes very difficult. But as far as the paintings are concerned, I consider that he considered it his work and I now consider it my work to conserve that and, and uh, uh, make sure that it's, it's seen and appreciated. And do you still think about him often? All the time. Yeah, sure. He's with me every day.